In this video, I'm going to continue working on the MPCNC that stands for Mostly Printed CNC Machine. And yes, it's been about six months since I made part one, but I've got a good reason for that. And the reason is I hurt my back back at the end of the summer. And if you remember, I had this underneath my work table on some drawer slides and the idea was I would pull it out when I needed to use it and then slide it back in when I'm done and that would be a nice space saving idea which I'm still going to do that but it just hurt my back to work on it while it was down here underneath this table. So what I've done is I have moved it up here to the top of the table where I can work on it. So here's where the machine sits right now. It is completely assembled. I have got all of the motors mounted. So the next step I need to do is run all of these wires so they don't get in the way and I can actually hook up the machine. And to do that, I have got a few of these cable drag chains that I got online and I will have a link to those down in the description. And then I also downloaded some parts off of Thingiverse that will make it easier for me to hook these drag chains up to the motors and run the cables through them.
Okay, so the MPCNC is finally finished. I've got all of the cables run through the cable chains. I did have to zip tie the power cord to the router to the sides of these two cable chains, and that seemed to work good on the CNC plasma cutter, and I believe it's gonna work good on this because that cable is too big to run through the cable chain itself. One annoying thing is this little strain relief right here on the router, it gets in the way. So I had to put a little zip tie on it to uh, hold it in place. I also 3D printed a case for the circuit board because I wanted to keep as much dirt and debris out of it as possible. And like I said, I 3D printed it and it does the job, but I'm really not happy with it because it seems to be a little flimsy. Maybe I 3D printed it wrong or something, I don't know. But uh, I'll, I'll put links to it in the description in case you guys are interested. I also got the spoil board mounted on the machine and I have it surfaced so it should be completely flat. And I started that job and I instantly regretted starting it because I don't have any dust collection on the machine and the spoil board is MDF and it created a ton of dust. So as you saw there, I did have to chase it with the shop vac to try and keep the dust down to a minimum. So I believe I've got the machine all dialed in. I've got all the settings and everything set on it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut some test blocks out to make sure the machine's in square and that it is also cutting pieces to the correct size. All right, so here's the test block that I just cut out on the machine. It is supposed to be 100 millimeters on each side. So this is a square with 100 millimeter sides. Let's see how well it did. I've got 99.82, and then we'll check this side, and we are 99.97. So I'm very happy with that. I don't think I could get any closer with a 3D printed CNC machine. Now let's check the squareness of this block and see if it's in square. And to check the squareness of this, I'm just gonna measure the diagonals. And on this one, we have 140.64. And on this axis, it is, let me get it right here, 140.67. So that is dead on square. And I did get into the spoil board a little bit, but I know what the mistake is that I made. If I measure this, you can see it is 0.65 millimeters into the spoil board. And like I said, I know what caused this. If I measure the wood that I was cutting, I thought it was 19 millimeters thick, and it turns out it is only 18.4 four millimeters thick. So there's most of the 0.65 that it cut into the spoil board. If I had just set this up for the right depth, it would have barely touched the top of the spoil board. So I'm really happy with the way the machine has turned out. It seems to be all set up and dialed in and ready to start making some parts. I do have a part I need to make for the mini jet boat project. And if you aren't familiar with that project, I will leave a link to it right up here in the corner of the screen. So please check that out. And if you like the video, please give me a big thumbs up and let me know down in the comments because that lets me know what types of videos you guys like to see. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming making stuff videos. And thanks for watching.